Not familiar with the name Vario? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. This is a company headquartered in Helsinki in Finland and with an office in the States. And the reason you may not have heard of them is, although they've been in the VR space for quite some time, they've been, up till this point, catering for the business or enterprise markets. On the 21st of October, all that changed, at a live webinar in which they announced their first consumer-facing product, the Vajo Aero VR headset. So what? Big deal, you may say. Well... On this occasion, it actually is quite a big deal. Vajo say their vision is to revolutionize reality, and they may just have taken a step in that direction. The Aero features the best visual display yet seen in a headset, with features normally only found in the enterprise and very expensive headset market. Welcome to the Sim Hanger. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. I have been fortunate enough to be able to get my hands on the Aero for some product testing and my thanks to Vario for the opportunity to do that. So far I've been able to accumulate something in the region I would say of 10 to 12 hours actually in the headset itself. Most of that in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And what I can attest to straight away is the suitability for anybody who wears standard size glasses as I do. There's plenty of room in the headset and the three point adjustments, the back, the top and the sides, make it easy and far more comfortable than most other headsets. In today's video, we're obviously going to be focused on flight simulation and Microsoft Flight Simulator in particular, but whatever I cover really applies to simulation overall. Really, I'm just trying to answer three questions. One, is the display and graphics as good as they say it is? And what's the impact on performance? Secondly, who is this aimed at? And three, how does it compare to the Reverb headset? I'm not going to run through every technical detail. That's already been done in a number of other reviews. There's Sebastian from MRTV and Steve from VR Flight Sim Guy have both done excellent reviews. I'll leave links to their videos in the notes below. But for now, let's have a look at one or two clips. The Vario Aero, a VR headset that is based on the VR3 and it's meant for us consumers. Now, I had a chance to check out the Vario Aero in the last few weeks. And the big question, of course, is, is it as good as the VR3? The answer is no, it is better. This is just too good to be true. This is too good to be true. I am so, so excited for the VR community. This is what we've wanted for so long. Thank you, Vario, for giving us this. This is it. This is it. Well, that was a typically exuberant VR flight sim guy. Don't forget to look him up. When I first got the headset, I can tell you that setup was a breeze. Quick simple intuitive and once i got into microsoft flight simulator and got the headset on my head well i was amazed in fact i was shocked i shouted out one word that began with f fantastic the graphics met and exceeded my expectations it's like looking at your monitor so i can answer the first question straight off the bat the graphics are exceptional. They are the best that I've ever experienced. It is a step change. It's not just an improvement that we've seen from one headset to another in the past. This is a step change in terms of graphics fidelity, contrast, color, and so on. It's a game changer. The high resolution graphics is achieved by dual mini LED LCDs. And when I first saw the graphics fidelity, I had to check specs again to make sure it was an LCD. Both panels combined give you 5760 by 2720. That's considerably more than the 4320 by 2160 from the Reverb. And there's a change in the optics. It's not using the standard Fresnel lenses, it's using aspheric lenses. 
and using more pixels per degree than we've experienced previously. Just a note, in my testing I've been able to push the resolution up as high as 8640. But of course, there's a performance penalty for doing that. It also importantly has automatic IPD adjustment. IPD is the distance between your eyes. And the lenses move and adjust automatically so you get the best view possible. And the supported range from 57 to 73, well it's wider than most. The headset comes with in-ear headphones. No built-in sound is a disadvantage, but during my testing not as big a disadvantage as I expected it to be. You do require base stations for tracking with this headset, and I use base stations that came with my original Vive, Steam version 1, and the tracking was absolutely excellent. It was faultless. The headset also comes with automatic eye tracking for foveated rendering. Once again, to give you the best view and best experience in the headset. And it worked faultlessly once again. I've already mentioned how comfortable the headset is. The one disadvantage, however, is taking the headset off means you have to loosen quite a number of the adjustments. And that means you've got to reseat it every time you put it on. But it's not a long drawn out process. It has active cooling, fans in the headset, and I didn't find them noisy or distracting at all. More product details as well as minimum PC specifications and recommended PC specifications are available from the Vario website. Once again, link in the notes below. It is however important to note that it only supports NVIDIA GPUs starting at an RTX 3070 or RTX 2080 and upwards. Requires one USB 3 and one DisplayPort 1.4. In an effort to demonstrate the graphics to you, I've included some through the lens capture using an iPhone. And the reality was this was really difficult to do, partly due to the fact that I'm not very good at this sort of thing and captured the footage in portrait rather than a landscape mode, and secondly due to the restrictions of the camera lens. In the headset, there's no mirror, no screen door, and I'm pleased to say no god rays either and there is very little edge to edge distortion in the display. Unfortunately, the camera does not really show it off to its best effect. And I have to say that the display in the headset is better than these captures. But if nothing else, at least they'll give you an idea of the experience that I had. Whilst the graphics fidelity decreases towards the periphery of your view, it's not to the same degree that we've experienced in other headsets. The contrast was excellent and the blacks, well they're good enough. And the best I've seen in an LCD panel. Colours are realistic and vibrant. But the most outstanding feature of this headset is you notice details in the sim you've never seen before. And that's not just close up, but also buildings in the distance. You can now spot that airport from many miles away. I'm not going to run through the software, the Vajo base that comes with the headset as it is still in development. And all the VR images were captured at the 2880 by 2720 pixels per eye, which is the default setting. There are a number of other settings available to you depending on your system's capability. The Vajo motion reprojection, which they call motion prediction, I had as set as off. The headset comes with OpenVR for Steam and OpenXR for Windows Mixed Reality based programs. Simple, quick and easy. There's also a one-click optimized performance which shuts down any Vajo applications not required to run your VR application. One very nice feature is there's a menu and action button on the side of the headset. So whilst you're in your VR application, you can access selected options and interact with them accordingly. Let's now talk about pricing. The cost is 1,990 euros or US dollars. At first glance, this appears fairly expensive, but bear in mind that cost is about the same as what an enthusiast would pay for a top-end graphics card. And this brings us round to answering our second question. Just who is this headset aimed at? This is good news for business or enterprise customers. As there's no subscription associated to this product, it allows business and enterprise customers an easier and cheaper option and entry into the VR workspace. For the individual or home use application, this is clearly aimed at the enthusiast. If you occasionally use VR and can take it or leave it, this is not the headset for you. 
However, for the enthusiast, if you want the best experience possible, as things stand today, and you want to experience complete immersion, then the Vajo Aero is leading the pack at this time. As mentioned previously, this product does require base stations. You can get away with one if it's seated applications, but if it's any moving around, you're going to need at least two. And this will add to the overall cost of ownership, as will any local or applicable regulatory duties or taxes that may be payable. And the same would apply to any controllers required for your particular application. So let's get down to basics. Am I going to order one? I've told you how good it is, am I going to put my money where my mouth is? And the answer is, yes I am. Have I ordered it already? No, I haven't. I'm fortunate that I've already got the base stations and the controllers. But nonetheless, in terms of disposable income, I'm going to have to save up a little while, as I had to for my 3090 graphics card. And once I've got Christmas out the way, and I can afford it, I'm definitely placing my order. I think it would be fair to say I truly am an enthusiast and I want to experience the best immersion and graphics I can get. And to be honest, I thought graphics such as these, well, I thought it was a year or two away. It's a fantastic product and I want it. My regular subscribers will be familiar with the stress test that I do. Departing from Mix Field, just offshore downtown Chicago, which is add-on scenery. And we're going to fly over downtown Chicago and swoop in low between the buildings. This is a great stress test to test performance. But what I can tell you from the get-go is that I've been very impressed with how this headset performs. In summary, I'm getting performance very much similar to what I was getting in my HP Reverb. But with the added advantage of the improved graphics and resolution. I'm seeing details on those buildings I've never seen before. If I get time, I'll do a direct performance comparison between the reverb and the aero, with FPS indicated. However, as I mentioned before, the headset's got to go back imminently, but I'll do it if I get the time. And so to wrap up, are the visuals as good as they say it is? Well, my answer is an emphatic yes. And who is it aimed at? It's aimed at the enthusiast. This is not a headset for everybody, but it is certainly something we can aspire to. And for me, it's great to see this step forward in technology. And so lastly, how does this compare to the Reverb headset? Well, in terms of comfort, I can wear it for about the same time that I can wear the Reverb, which is normally two to two and a half hours before needing to take a break. It's heavier than the HP offering, but the weight distribution is more evenly balanced across your head. So they're very much on a par there, but it is more comfortable. And last but not least, overall performance? Well, I think you can judge for yourself. I don't know what magic they've weaved with their OpenXR implementation, but I like it. And please bear in mind that I'm using a beta. Both the headset and the software is still in development. And I'm aware that Vajo are actively working on this product right now, so I do expect further improvements. One thing I do need to mention is that in terms of consistency, I found I got best performance when using a USB 3 hub that was powered, rather than plugging it directly into my computer. This headset does come with a link box, very much like the original Vive did, something I really do like. And I really would like to see an power on off button on that link box. The Vario Aero has brought us a step change in terms of graphics fidelity in VR. And this is a very welcome development in the evolution of virtual reality. What are your thoughts on the direction that technology is heading and on this headset? Don't forget to pop a comment below. If you've stuck with me this far, well you must be an enthusiast and thank you very much. I hope you found it useful and informative. Help the channel by hitting the like button if you think it deserves it. Take care, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now.